What is up everybody, Kenji aka Numat the Nummy here once again gonna bring you an Innistrad Block 8-4 draft as we usually do. I'm gonna go ahead and jump in the queue. Uh, before I start though I just want to say that uh, this video is brought to you by ManaDeprived.com all your magic needs if you need anything there just visit ManaDeprived.com and they got a wide selection of articles and other uh, stuff you guys can check out. Uh, yeah, so go ahead and do that and uh, we'll bring it back when uh, the queue fires, which should be shortly. Oh, which is now. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's take a look at what we got here. <clears throat> Our uh, double face card is the Mondronin Shaman, and on the back side is the Toveler's Mage Hunter. Uh, it's a pretty good one. I mean, it's the same size as the Tormented Pariah uh, on the front side, which is actually pretty bad. Four mana for a 3 2 is just very meh. Um. On the flip side, though, it is very, very powerful. If you ever get it flipped, um, your opponent's just going to be racking up a ton of damage over the course of the game. And if they ever want to flip it, they have to play two spells, meaning they take four damage. So, quite good. Um, our regular rare is Thalia. She's pretty good. I mean, in uh, Limited, she often hurts you just as much as she hurts the opponent. But a 2 1 first strike for two is uh, perfectly acceptable. Then there's Farbog Boneflinger, Highborn Ghoul. Wild Hunger, and I guess to some extent Niblis of the Mist. Um, so we got some strong strong black and white cards, and there's only one strong red card, so I'm going to go ahead and take the Shaman. I actually like uh, Werewolves a lot um, in this format. Red-Green is really strong, uh, I feel like, and if you can get a Wild Hunger or an Immer Wolf or something, you can just you know, easily take over. Uh, so we got past um, both the rares in this pack. Pretty interesting. Uh, I don't think Ravenous Demon is a first pickable card, but um, it f fits perfectly well in the black-white humans deck. Uh, you know, turning into a Lord of the, P a Lord of the Pit. <laughs> I guess it's bigger than a Lord of the Pit, but, you know, same thing. Uh, we also have Predator Ooze, which is quite restrictive on the mana cost, but very, very strong. I mean, there are um, a few ways to just kind of uh, null nullify it like Bonds of Faith and stuff like that, but it's still a very strong card. Um, if we're going to go with the Werewolves theme, though, we're going to try, try to stay red-green, and I don't want to pick the Predator Ooze because it's just too uh, intensive. I think I'm going to take the Forge Devil here. Forge Devil is actually a very strong card in this format. There are just a lot of X1s, um, and it can, you know, finish off a creature that might be a little bit bigger. Uh, unfortunate that we got to pass the Stromkirk Noble. Um, actually, you know what? I lied. I'm going to take the Stromkirk Noble. <laughs> uh, I was saying werewolves, but I mean, it's a red card, so you know we could just as easily go the captain route, um, or I mean the vampire route. And anytime you get past a captain, it's a pretty pretty strong signal because you know there's only pack, uh, captains in the initial pack. Um, I know I said I wanted to go red green, and I kind of jumped ship at the last second there, but this card is just so much uh, higher quality than the Forge Devil, so it's obviously worth it. Okay, anyways, going on to this pack, we get quite a treat in the Flare of the Undead. Um, you know, it obviously looks like we're going to be base red, and uh, it's nice to get a third pick Flare. That's a pretty good signal for us. Um, it's too bad that we're passing some other nice the nice cards, but the Flare is just way above anything else. I mean, the Stranglerout Geist, the Young Wolf, Sea Kite, Wild Hunger, um, some other cards are perfectly fine, but, you know, we'll take the Flare here. Alrighty, hmm. So, a few options. Wow, this is like the third or fourth Wild Hunger. I'm going to go on a little tangent about the Wild Hunger. I think this card is actually like the nut um, combat trick. Just getting in for so much damage, because Trample is uh, pretty legitimate. And the one toughness is actually a huge boon. Like, you don't realize it at first. One toughness doesn't seem like a lot, but it often saves the creature while pumping over huge damage. So, there's that. Um... We're not necessarily on the vampire ship yet, so it's always uh, good to keep an eye out on other things. I think, yeah, the like burning oil is a perfectly fine card, but I don't think I'm going to be taking it. I'm not going to take near he stalker here. Highborn ghoul is okay, although the double black is kind of prohibitive. I think I'm just going to go with the wild hunger, to be honest. Like I like that card that much. Uh, so while it might not have been quote unquote correct pick, uh, it's the pick that goes favorably with the type of decks that I want to draft. Alright, so pretty much nothing here. I mean, there's like a Harrowing Journey, which is acceptable in black. 
Um, it's actually, you know, pretty good. Um, if you're if you're the aggressor, easy to draw three cards, refill your hand, or if uh, you've got them already, the opponent already low enough, you can you can just shoot him for three damage. Uh, so I guess there's what Hunger of the Howl Pack, Rusted Wolves, Herring Journey, and that's about it for us. I think I'm gonna go with the um, Rusted Wolves here. We know for sure that we're gonna be red. We're not quite uh, determined on our second color yet. Uh, so we're just going to take the uh, for sure playable. Ooh, and that's a pretty nice pickup. Uh, we got a Pyreheart Wolf here for six pick. And uh, this card should not be going this late. I mean, it looks pretty innocuous as a 1 1 for three. But the ability is so strong. And the fact that it has Undying, you know, it comes back. Uh, and they've already had to chump it with two creatures once, etc., etc. Uh, some strong cards in this pack. We've passed a bunch of Sea Kites and quite a few Niblises, but. Definitely taking the Pyre Heart here. Not to mention the Pyre Heart also combos well with our uh, Flare of the Und or sorry, Flare of the uh, Hate Bound. Alrighty, Pack Seven. Um, I think I'm gonna go with the Young Wolf. This is also a pretty uh, innocuous card, just like the uh, Pyre Heart Wolf or whatever I said it was earlier. Um, like coming down on turn one, this creature, you know, your opponent just doesn't want to trade with it. Like, they're often just getting quite a bit of value. Uh, like, Soul Caesar is still here, which is very, well, not very good, but pretty good. Face Shield is very good. Stuff like that. We're going to take the Young Wolf. There was also an Earthwald Ripper, but uh, that's not too impressive, especially since it has one toughness. Ooh, and we're slamming the 8th pick Forge Devil here. Uh, that's another Soul Caesar. Back-to-back -back Soul Caesar, 7th and 8th pick. Um, you know, Soul Caesar is just not as impressive as I once thought it was. Like, it's still a perfectly fine card, but it's it's definitely not a mind control. Uh, yeah, Forge Devil, not close. And I guess here we'll take the Haunted Fengraf. None of these cards are, uh, uh, none of the other cards are playable for us. And this is a potential, I suppose. Alrighty, so the second Forge uh, Devil came back around. That's a pretty sweet pick, pick up for us. I like the Heckling Fiends is playable, not ne not necessarily something that I'm happy playing, but yeah, Forge Devil all the way. Oh wow, Wild Hunger, eleventh pick. Uh, I think I'm slamming that over the Torch Fiend. Still grip tight in the pack too. <laughs> blue seems to be pretty open, <clears throat> but you know, just I don't like blue in this format. It's fine, it's perfectly fine. It's just not my uh, preference per se. Alright, go ahead and hide all this junk. I mean, we still could play black, you never know. Depending on what we open, like a Blood Gift Demon or something. But, with two Wild Hungers, I'm pretty set in playing green. And, of course, we open a pretty poor pack. How's that for alliteration for you? Pretty poor pack. The Triple P. Anyway, uh, we got a Past in Flames, which is worth like four tickets. Foil Creeping Renaissance, which is okay, not special. I mean, we do have a lot of uh, cheap creatures that could easily be bought and back, but it's not a first pickable card here. Then there's Moan of the Unhallowed, Unburial Rites, Grizzled Outcast, and Festerhide Boar. Um, I think I'm actually just going to go with the Grizzled Outcast. I think it's the worst of the cards I mentioned. Uh, but, that being said, like Werewolves has a lot of synergy with uh, each other. So if I can pick up some Moon Mists or something, you know, it's pretty, pretty sweet. And what do we got here? Pretty much a blank, except for, I guess, Geist Flame. Like, Lumbernaut's fine, but with Werewolves, you're always going to have pretty big creatures anyway. And while, uh, you know, the Lumbernaut is not susceptible to targeted uh, effects of your opponents, I don't think I want it as my 4-drop right now. There's still quite a bit of black. I mean, had we... Like taking the Mona the Unhallowed last pack, we'd have some decent black options here, uh, for sure. Like the Morkrep Banshee, Screeching Bats, but uh, Geist Flame is perfectly good. I mean, uh, to be honest, it fills the same role as Forge Devil, which is kind of awkward, but um, you know it flashes back, and uh, sometimes you just need the instant speed. And blank. Ugh, this is pretty ugly here. Uh, like, the best cards in this pack are white and blue. Cloistered youth, Cloistered youth is very good. 
Doom Traveler is very good. Armored Scab is very good. Battleground Geist is pretty good. Uh, like, the options for us here are Rolling Temblor or Ashmouth Hound. I never take Creepy Doll. I just actually hate this card. I think it's actually terrible. Um, sure, in slower, maybe control -y decks, it's fine. But not a fan of that card. I'm going to take the Ashmouth Hound. We actually need a 2-drop, and it you know, goes well with our aggressive deck. And actually, it's really nice with the uh, Geist Flame and Forge Devils. Like, we're able to take out um, some pretty big stuff with it. All right, now we're talking. Got some nice green-red options here. Uh, I'm slamming the Dark Thicket Wolf. It's just miles ahead of the Ambush Viper or the Village Ironsmith. And yeah, I think it's actually just the best card in the pack anyways. So, happy to take that. Hmm, pretty yucky here. Like, Crossway Vampire or Kessig Wolf. Um, I think I'm going to go with the Kessig Wolf. I plan to pick up at least a Moon Mist or two, uh, if not in this pack than the next one, and so it's going to have more synergy. I know we took that uh, Stromkirk Captain earlier, but just going to go with the Wolf. There's also a Screeching Bat here, which is questionable, but whatever. Hmm. Alright, so Harvest Pyre or Pilgrim, and I think I'm going to slam the Pilgrim here. Uh, like, Ramp is Ramp. This is obviously the, the nuts in the green-white deck, but being able to ramp out any of these guys faster is pretty, pretty key. And I don't think I want another Harvest, or I mean another Actually, I guess I don't have one, but uh, I think the Pilgrim is just a little bit better than the Pyre. I know removal is often, you know, you're supposed to take it above creatures like this, but I think the utility of the Pilgrim makes up for it. And speak of speak of the devil, we can get another one if we wanted to. Or there's also a Rakish Air and another Grizzled Outcast. I think here I'm going to take the Harvest Pyre. Um, I would play the, out, the second Outcast if I got it, but... Uh, I think it's going to be a little bit easier to get the Outcasts than the Harvest Pyre. And Rakish Air is obviously, you know, like a Grey Ogre kind of in our deck. Eh, pretty poor Slim Pickens here. Uh, I'm going to take the Spider. Not going to play any of these other ones. We could also take the Grotto. I'm going to show all the cards here and see what we have. Like The Grotto would allow us to splash something, but we have nothing of notable to splash, so we'll just go with the Spider. Ooh, the Festerhide Boar actually came back. Okay, that's cool. Um, yeah, it's the only playable card in the pack for us anyway. Hmm, don't think I'm going to play a Night Revelers. We already have enough 5 drops, I think. And I'm going to go with the Grotto, just in case we do end up splashing. And pretty much junk for these last few picks. Oh, actually, we might play the Nightbird's Clutches. Yeah, Vampiric Fury. <laughs> Quizzer's Flail. Yeah, okay, so just a bunch of junk now. Alright, so let's open up something sweet here for this last pack for us. Devil's Play would be nice, or Mayor of Averbrook would be pretty sweet. The Mayor would fit nicely in our curve, we need those two drops. Because the ones that we have, we're not playing, or at least some of them. Splinter Fright, you're not what I wanted. Alright, hmm. Splinter Fright is actually okay in our deck. Uh, we, we're going to have a high threshold of creatures, and um, it actually does a fine job of like getting like Wild Hunger, Night Birds Clutches, Geist Flame is pretty good value. And the only card I'd take over it, I, like, I'd be taking the Tormented Pariah or the Kessig Wolf. So it seems like Splinter Frights are actually an okay pick. I think I'm going to actually go with that. Ooh. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so we get past the nuts. Instigator Gang and Kessig Wolf Run. Uh, we're slamming the gang here. But um, both of these are perfectly good picks. Like, the gang is obviously better. But uh, uh, what else? Uh, what also needs to be said is that um, the Kessig Wolf run might actually wheel. Like, it's highly unlikely. But uh, unless you're straight red-green, it's very hard to splash these type of cards just because uh, the cost is so prohibitive. So we're going to gladly take the gang here. And hopefully the Wolf run will wheel. Like, one, two, three... Four, five, six. Like, it's very possible that Kessig Wolf run wheels. And if nothing else, we might get, like, the Pilgrim or the Geist Flame back. Um, very unlikely, but, hey, it's always a possibility. Alright, what do we got here? Villagers of Estwald, snapping that up. I know we want, like, no more, or more two drops, but the Villagers is just such a solid creature. Haven't seen a, Ge or a Moon Mist yet, so we want to see one of those, if we can. <clears throat> 
and whiff on the moon mist, but we're going to pick up a silver inlaid dagger. Like, Pitchburn Devils is uh, decent enough, but the dagger is just so nice, especially since we have already four creatures in the one-drop slot. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, obviously you can't play the Devils on turn one unless the opponent already played something. But, whoa, wow. So, there's a murder of crows in this pack, and it's fifth pick. That's a pretty big sign. <laughs> I know I said blue was open earlier, and seems like it. Uh, we're gladly going to take the Shepherd, though. Two-drop Werewolf. Yeah, pretty nice. Moonmist. Oh, more. More nice blue. All right, well, there's only one card in the pack for us. And it is not a Moonmist. Come on, where is Moon Mist? Jeez. So we can take a Mulch, a Feral Ridge Wolf, a Traitor's Blood. All seem pretty poor. I guess I'll take the Traitor's Blood. We have enough creatures, and I'm not going to play Mulch. Moon Mist, one time. Oh. Alright, well this was our last pack to get Moon Mist, so that's too bad. Uh, we'll pick up the Flare, or Slayer, or Cultist rather. I <laughs> can't speak. And I guess we're going to take a Kessig Wolf over the Tormented Prior since we didn't have any Moon Mists. Alright, so we got the Scourge back on the wheel. So the Kessig Wolf run was taken, the Pilgrim was taken, and what, the Geist Flame was it, I think, was taken? That's fine. Sure. Alright, so overall our deck came together um, alright. There were a few options, or a few uh, possibilities in the draft that we could have switched colors and you know maybe we should have but uh, I like sticking to red green just because we had the double wild hunger um very unfortunate we didn't pick up any moon mist like moon mist is super super key in the the werewolf deck uh, I guess we didn't get a huge number of werewolves but we have a large number of werewolves plus wolves so that's a little bit Disconcerting, but oh, excuse me, we'll have to manage. Hey, all of our greens playable. Look at that. I'm just throwing out the playables. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to play all of these. Obviously, since we are already at 30 playables here. Um, time to cut some stuff. Okay, so Trader's Blood synergizes well with the Skurzdag Cultist, but we don't need. Uh, one in whatever chance that is. Uh, I think I'm going to cut the Russet Wolves here. Not a fan of Spider. Like, this card's very good against Flyers, obviously, but, uh, yeah, I'm just not a fan of this card. Like, Morbid is easily enabled at uh, on turn 5 or 5 plus or whatever, but, like, whenever I play that card, I always feel like it's not getting as much value as it should be. So we're cutting that. Uh, probably cutting the Knight's Bird's Clutches. Let's see, what else? 26 cards, 21 creatures, so that's still a high majority of creatures. I think I'm going to cut the Riot Devils. Um, two more cuts, let's look here. I'm also not a big fan of the Scourge of Gaia Reach. Um, yeah, I think we can cut it here. Like, we have enough combat tricks early on that I don't think we necessarily need the Scourge. And we can put enough pressure on that the Scourge isn't going to be such a big deal. Hmm. Alright, one more cut. What's it looking to be? I'm actually thinking about cutting one of the Forge Devils since we just have, or since we picked up a Geist Flame. Like I said before, it fills the same niche role. Um, I'm also looking at one Kessig Wolf to cut, just because it eats up a lot of mana. Um, I like the fact that we have 19 creatures at the moment with Splinter Fright, though, so that's going to make it pretty nice. Uh, I know I cut the Nightbird's Clutches already, but it does synergize well with the Splinter Fright. Although we do have three flashback targets, and it does feed the Harvest Pyre, so that's good. Good for us. <laughs> it's always the last card. It's hard to cut. Alright, I think I'm going to go with the Forge Devil. Um, if our opponent has a deck with, you know, a lot of niblesses that have uh, one toughness or something of that nature, then we can obviously sideboard it in. But for now, I think we're going to run with this list. Mm, double Kessig Wolf. No, I'm going to cut a Kessig Wolf, actually. I'll have the double Forge Devils. 
I am a fan of that card. And like I said before, Kessig Wolf is just holding up my mana too much, whereas I need to be using it for other things. Okay, we'll run with this 23, and I think we're heavier red. Maybe a little bit. So we're going 9, maybe 8. Yeah, that sounds about good. And that's what they suggest anyway. So hey, worked out pretty well for us. All right, we'll go ahead and submit this. Hey, and we'll see you for round one.